Welcome to Rising Stars, where Miriam Knight, publisher of New Consciousness Review, interviews exciting new voices in the world of progressive and transformational books, films, and ideas who offer intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us as we celebrate the conscious awakening and explore many expressions of consciousness in action. Welcome to New Consciousness Review and Rising Stars. I'm Miriam Knight, and our guest today is Lise Bourbeau. She is the founder of the largest French personal growth school in the world, the Listen to Your Body School. In 1982, Lise left her successful career in international sales to follow a dream in which she was helping people listen to their body. She founded the Listen to Your Body School in Canada, and the philosophies taught through her workshops and through her 24 best-selling books are based on the relearning of unconditional love. She and her team run workshops around the world, and her books have sold over 4 million copies in more than 22 countries. I'm delighted to welcome you. Lise, welcome to the show. Well, I'm very happy to be with you. You know, when I heard the theme of your work, Listen to Your Body, I was very intrigued because in Western medicine and in uh, Western society in general, our attitude tends to be master your body, make it do what you want it to do. And listening to your body is such a different approach. How did you come up with this concept? Well, it... um... It was all uh, inspiration. And when I saw, I just saw this in my head, like the listen to your body. And uh, well, it came after I had done some work on myself because I had been in sales for 16 years. And, you know, as it is in sales, you, you go through seminars for positive thinking and all this and that. And and I was very much into that. Uh, I started I started working on myself uh, about, uh, let me see now, 33, 48 years ago. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, uh, I was always very interested in, in all the, these books and uh, seminars that I could attend. And it helped me in sales. But I was mostly in the, in the positive thinking uh, you know, way of it being. And it's when I, one day I had, uh, after my divorce, I gain weight. And I had the brilliant idea, one morning I got up, uh, to write everything I eat and uh, drink. And it was uh, really unbelievable. The eye opening I had, the, the, uh, I saw everything about myself. I saw the cause of my divorce. I saw how rigid I was, how, uh, you know, I wanted to, I, I, I thought I had the truth for everybody. I was trying to control my husband, my children, and uh, and myself because I was a very demanding person, and I, I just I just saw everything about myself, and I started to realize that I was eating, physically eating the same. I was feeding my physical body the same way I was feeding my emotional and mental body, you know, by controlling it. And so I decided to eat only when I was hungry. And and then ask, take the time to see what do I want to eat. And this, I'll, I'll tell you, it took just a few months and I lost the 12 kilos. I had too much. But at the same time, all my aches and pains and diseases went away. Mm-hmm. So I thought, oh, there must be a connection between my new way of thinking because it's, my children were teenagers then. And they were saying, well, mom, I don't know what you're doing, but don't stop huh? because you're a much nicer person to be with <laughs> now. And, and, you know, they could see the change in me too. Like, I, it, like before, if my children would say, I'm not hungry. You know, I say, supper time, I'm not hungry. I'd say, I didn't ask if you were hungry. Now, the supper's on the table, and you, you, it, it, I'm not a servant. I can't make emails whenever you're hungry. And you see, I was imposing that on me and on, on them. We had to eat your three meals a day. And according to all the beliefs I had, I'm from my mom. And uh, so now we would eat when we were hungry and, and everything went really well. And I started to listen more to my other needs. And uh, so the, the, my weight went down 
And I was so excited to, to see that there was a relationship between my way of thinking and, and all the aches and pains. I started to watch all my friends and my sisters and see, you know, the connection between their backache and <laughs> the way they were, because there was nothing in those days on that. Now we're talking about 1980. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, uh, 35 years ago. And, the, and then one day somebody gave me a bunch of papers sta stapled together from Louise Hay. Oh. And she, she did not have a book yet, but she had written those papers. I don't know who for, but it was, uh, you know, some, but something that they, they gave me. And all she had was like three columns on the paper. It would say like stomach ache. Second column, it would say somebody you cannot digest. And the third column was an affirmation that you repeat often, often. And I said, oh, my God, I'm right. You know, there is a connection between the way of thinking and and the, the, the aches and pains. And so that then I, I was very excited. And that's when I uh, I had my dream. I woke up one night in the middle of the night and I, I could see myself in front of a big crowd uh, teaching them to listen to their body. So I, for you know, over the years, it's true that I have always been searching because I'm a, uh, I have, I realize that I have a good capacity to sensitize things. I I can read a very complicated book, but then I make it simple, simple to teach, simple to understand, and. I think this is what has made my school because they say you talk about very, very profound things, but it's easy to understand. So we don't, uh, we can apply it in our life much faster this way. And so this is what I've been doing all these years, always looking for more answers. And, and I, I do get a lot of answers uh, that come to me about how to put things together to make it easier to to practice real love in your life, because this is what I learned the most about my way of eating, that I was not loving myself because I was not eating according to the needs of my body. I was eating according to what I had learned, according to my beliefs. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, now your, your book, book is, is uh, are you hearing, are you hearing an, an echo? echo? If I want. Are you hearing an, hearing an echo? No. No. Oh, good. Okay. okay. Just me. So uh, your latest book is called Cancer, A Book of Hope, mm -hmm. which I found fascinating. Uh, and I was delighted that your publicist um, sent it to me uh, because I was not familiar with your work. And I hope that your work actually becomes much more well known here in the States because um, it is applying what you talk about, listening to your body, yeah. um, to what is really arguably the, the greatest fear, medical fear, amongst uh, the population today, the, the fear of cancer. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. And it's an epidemic everywhere in the world. Absolutely, and, and growing. And yeah. we seem to feel helpless in the face of it. Yeah. And yet you are giving people understandings in this book yeah. that I think will help them either overcome the cancer more easily or at least come to a, a sense of peace yeah. with where they are in it. Mm -hmm. So... Let's start with what seems to be a central premise in your book, which is that the relationship that you have with the same sex parent in your life seems to be very central in developing the disease. Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, closely related to the, the rejection wound. So, uh, I have another book, which is uh, the, the, my most popular book on on the wounds. It's Heal Your Wounds. You know, I, I talk about the five wounds. Um, I don't. You've heard about the five uh, soul wounds uh, before. Have you heard about that before? Not no, as just, such. No. 
um, I I had the, I learned about these wounds with uh, John Pieracos is uh, a uh, American, but he's died now. He, he was an old man, and um, it's um, but I, I made a big a lot of research on the wounds. And actually, when I hear about something new, I like to go around with all the people I know around me. I ask questions. I I I listen. I watch, and and, and then I make my own synthesis. And uh, there's five main wounds for everybody on earth uh, because now I know I've been working with them for 25 years and any kind of problem we have is always related to one or many of these wounds uh, whether it's a physical problem or emotional problem a sexual problem money whatever uh, and five wounds are rejection abandonment humiliation betrayal and injustice and it's it's very very interesting. I just love to 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 work with the wounds, but rejection is the wound that hurts the most because when you when you suffer from rejection, is you suffer in your whole being. It's about who you are. It's not what you do. It's what who you are. And and people who suffer from rejection, if you just tell them, uh, you you point to them a mistake they make. And they'll say, uh, okay, tell me I'm nothing, I'm not worth anything. I said, I never said that what you are. I'm just pointing to you something that you do. You're not what you do, but you cannot explain. You, a person that's in that wound cannot understand that. They think that they are what they do. So if they make a mistake, I mean, it's... Uh, they, they, by the way, they, they hit themselves on the head. They don't blame other people. They, they, they blame themselves. And the fear of rejection comes from uh, your relationship with your, the parent of the same sex because at birth, that parent was your, your sole... Um, yeah, yeah. Now, this is a really important point, Lise, and I don't want to interrupt it. So we need to take a break right now, but then uh, let's pick it up when we come back. Okay. We're speaking with Lise Bourbeau about Cancer, a Book of Hope. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Hi, this is Angela Levesque, host of Entanglement Radio. Join me Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations with visionaries in spiritual science and conscious healing. Entanglement Radio, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. Transcendent talk for the conscious mind. The name is Bond. James Bond. No, the name is Joe. The Joe Show. And we are returning back for our ninth season here on Old Times Radio. So tune in every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, on oldtimes.com slash mobile. You can take us wherever you go. Yeah! Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. I'm Miriam Knight, and we are speaking with Lise Bourbeau about her book, Cancer, A Book of Hope. So, Lise, you're saying that uh, the relationship with one's parent of the same sex is tied somehow to a feeling of rejection by that parent. So how does that play out in our lives? 
Well, first of all, it's important to realize that we do not feel rejected because our parent rejected us. We chose that parent before we were born to come to work on that wound because this, you know, the soul is going to be happy when we stop with all these fears and these uh, beliefs and our ego and everything. So that's why we always pick before we are born. We, we, we are attracted towards the parents that we need in order to help us uh, do whatever we have to do in our plan of life. So automatically uh, a little girl uh, that needs to work a lot on her wound of rejection will automatically attract a mother that in her behavior will make the little girl feel rejected and the same with the little boy with his father but the problem why the the wound of rejection is the one that causes the most serious diseases is because when you feel rejected it's so it hurts so much that you learn very, very young to deny everything. You put the lid on it so you, you don't feel it, you don't suffer. This is why people who have that wound, uh, they can hardly remember anything when they were young because they were always gone in their world, you know, with their little invisible friends, and uh, they hardly remember things before seven years old. And if you ask them, how was your relationship with your mom? Uh, the, the, the woman will say, oh, well, it was okay. Well, she was a little strict or sometimes unfair, but it's okay. She did her best. You know, this is the kind of answer that I'll get. And uh, because that's the first question I ask when I hear somebody has cancer or has had cancer. And uh, before I wrote my book, I, I even if I had thousands of testimonies from many, many of the customers, and we had many, lots and lots of people who healed themselves, I wanted to really, really be sure of everything, all my sentences that I was going to write in the book, and I did many, many interviews by Skype, by phone, in person with people who, who had cancer before, or had cancer at the moment, I talked to them, and not one had realized or knew the fact that they felt rejected by their, their parent of the same sex. And it's unbelievable because you've read the book, huh? you read the, the examples I gave, <laughs> you know, with that, that little girl who, who was the fifth in the family and uh, the, she was an accident. The, that child was not planned. And when she was born, the parents and her brothers and sister called her the accident. She had, no other name. Hey, accident, come and see me, you know. Uh, and she says she never felt rejected, you know. It's, <laughs> it's unbelievable, but it, it, that's the truth. And this is what it's eating uh, inside. You see, this rejection is so pushed inside. And this is what causes the cancer because we always think of a cancer of a, a little beast that's eating away things, in, you know, your cells in your body. And you can make the connection. So this is why the first thing they need to, to know is accept the fact that, yes, I have, been, I have felt rejected. And, and then they have to do uh, the only way for me to heal any kind of disease is accepting the fact and forgiving the people that we have accused of being this or that with us, you know, because... For sure, the little girl that has a mother felt rejected by her mother, we know for a fact that that mother felt rejected by her own mother. So she did not know any other way to, to raise a little girl, you see. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you actually have a very interesting take on forgiveness. Yes. It's different from uh, what we normally conceive of as forgiveness. Uh, it, it's really more... Um, coming to a place of compassion and understanding That's for right. the parent. Yeah. Explain that for us. Well, because when we accuse, we become what we accuse, or we are already like that, but we don't know about it. So that means that if, if I can't stand, I don't want to be like my mother, uh, because all... It, Without exception, everybody I talked to uh, for the last 30 years with cancer, without exception, they always, when I ask the question, since you are younger, 
have you ever thought that you wanted to be like your mom or you wanted to be like your dad? And they say, oh, never. I never want to be like my mom. So I, then I said, do you realize when you're saying this, you are rejecting your mom? Oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> and so that means that they, they think that the mom is wrong. They don't want to be like them. And, and the forgiveness is, is, uh, is applied, the law of love, which is we just must accept people the way they are, with their wounds, with their beliefs, with their fears, being different from what we would like. Just, just say yes to it. They, we don't have to understand why they are like that. Just... Just feel the uh, the the uh, the suffering that they've had too, because if a little girl suffers with her mom, if we can feel that this mom had the same suffering with her own mother and suffering with herself, she hates herself also as much as the, as you can hate your mother. The mother hates herself too. She hated her mother, and this word hate, people. Uh, are afraid of that but you it's okay to hate people because in order to hate you have to love very much first you cannot hate somebody that's indifferent to you 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 have to want to love that person so much that it turns to hate because you are so hurt you're so disappointed it doesn't go the way you want and so they you can transform this hate into having a lot of compassion for the people and I have seen, I mean, uh, you know, I've had this school for 34 years now, almost 34 years, and I have seen thousands and thousands and thousands of of uh, healing of all kinds following a real forgiveness. So I know that it works, and, I, uh, and I've heard such beautiful stories and so touching to, to see that the whole family is, uh, is back together because the, the, the girl that achieves that to be able to to be okay with the mom not to hurt not to hate her anymore well that means that she's starting to love herself and that means that she's stopping this this vicious circle you know from one life to the other with her daughter that's because it continues from one generation to the other until there's love huh? mm-hmm. you say in the book that um Real forgiveness is begins with self forgiveness. Yes. That's that's a really important point. Yes, because it, this is why in my uh, approach, because you'll see in the book in one of the chapter on forgiveness, I have seven uh, seven steps. Uh, I suggest always the step to forgive the other person because it's easier to forgive the other person than it is to forgive yourself. Because once you start having compassion for your mother, let's say that. Uh, that you you accused her of this and that. Once you start having compassion for that person and you can feel her own suffering, her suffering, your mother's suffering, uh, then you start being angry at yourself for not seeing it before, for being so bad with your mom. Because sometimes they uh, they say, like, uh, let's say I have one that I think of in one of the examples in the book, she she said, no, I never felt rejected by my mom. It was okay. But she hasn't talked to her mom for five years. So you see, it's, it, there is something there. And uh, once she starts feeling compassion, then the, the most people tend to have the reaction of, oh, my God, how come I didn't see that before? And I was, I was not nice to her. I, I said bad things about her. I, I, you know, I thought bad things about her. And they start feeling angry at themselves for being so mean to the person that they were having a problem with. So this is why after, after you, you have the compassion for the other, then you start, you must do it with yourself. Because some people, it takes quite some time between the two steps. They, they, they're okay with their parent, but after that, they, they, it's with themselves that they have to have the same compassion and say, look, I am a human being, and when I was mean to my mom or to anyone else, when I was mean, it's because I was suffering. I'm not a bad person. I was just a suffering person. To have, start having that compassion for yourself, not instead of hitting you on the head and, thinking that you're not okay. Mm-hmm. 
Now, you say that uh, serious physical or psychological illness is always related to the wound of rejection. Yes. Now, how do you think that works? You, you also mentioned that thought can block energy. Is that what we're doing to ourselves, that we're blocking the flow, we're, we're constricting the flow of energy because of these feelings? Yes, because it's uh, the thought, not, not all thoughts, because thoughts uh, are, can be good or bad. Huh? It depends who runs the thought. If, if, if you're thinking with your intelligence, with your heart, you have good thoughts. But if, if you let your ego take over, then that's it. You're, you're, it's, it's blocking your energy. So, and it's, so a disease is always a blockage of energy, any kind of disease. Yeah. How do you conceive of the ego? Uh, you you are not a great fan of the ego. <laughs> well, well, the ego actually has taken over the world, and uh, it's uh, it's been getting worse and worse and worse with with the the thousands of years that or I think millions of years that we exist. I don't know how many millions, but uh, ego is always at uh, at the back of all the. Uh, all the bad things that happened to us because to me the ego is the totality of your of your belief system so beliefs are only mental it comes it's it's a mental uh, attitude you, you need your mental um, energy to to create a belief so let's say i um when i was young uh, my mother preferred the uh, my sister to me, well, maybe at that, at that time, maybe I have decided this is it. I'm nothing. I'm not good. I'm not good enough. And um, only my sister is good enough. So I decided to believe that. And so a belief comes from a deduction that you make on something that happens. And those beliefs are continue from one generation to the other, from one family to the other. You, you, come, you come back on earth with all your your old beliefs that are all there in your in your soul from past life. So we are filled with hundreds, hundreds of beliefs that are not good for us. Oh, dear. Is that hunting. ever true? Well, we're going to take another break, but we are speaking with Lise Bobo, and her website is listentoyourbody.com. Stay with us, and we'll be right back. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Join Elliot Jolish, the business therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jollish Hour. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, intuitive life coach and energy healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Home Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. I'm Miriam Knight speaking with Lise Bourbeau. Um, now, we are have the 
benefit of a very generous offer from Lee's. Uh, her book, Cancer, A Book of Hope, uh, has just come out, and she is offering uh, two signed copies of her book to uh, the, the two lucky listeners who are drawn from a hat. So if you want to enter our drawing, just email us at info at ncreview.com, info at ncreview.com, um, or you can sign up on our radio page on Ohm Times, on the New Consciousness Review radio page. There is a form there for signing up and entering the draw. And we will be giving away two copies of Lisa's book, uh, Cancer, A Book of Hope. So, Lee, speaking of cancer, um, you have some fascinating uh, case studies of people who have re- recognized the, the source of their feelings of rejection and come to peace with themselves. Um, will everyone who forgives themselves and, and their parent heal from cancer? What are the, the parameters here? Well, I would say that um, at least uh, for my, I've never thought of that figure, but I've been, um, I've been aware of, of a few people, maybe in all the people I've been working with, maybe five of them uh, died after doing all the forgiveness and everything. But it's like the, the body uh, was at the point of no return. The body was too tired, too uh, affected by this cancer that had been coming back to them many times. And But what what made me feel real good is that these people, they died with peace in their heart and they had made peace with their parent. And it's like the soul maybe has said, well, okay, I've done what I have to do in this lifetime with this body and uh, I'm going back in the soul world and I'll come back with another another body some other time. So it's um, it's okay to me, even if they die of it, it's not that, it's not, that the most important thing. The most important thing is, are you doing what you're supposed to do? Meaning, are you going towards more love? Because if you die any way or at any age, and you can really say that over the years in your life, you have more and more love for yourself and for your your close ones, well, then you, you've you achieved your goal because this is all that your our soul wants is to go back to love, to really love you, you talk about cancer running in families and you kind of link that to some kind of previous association in past lives. That was quite fascinating to me. Can you expand upon that? Well, I believe that we come from a, a big family of souls and we have like what they say, what's up there is down here. As that's what they mean by we, we we live in a family on earth, and we have a big family of souls. So many times we come back with the same souls of the, the of the same family. But that's I mean, people can can even if they don't believe that we do have more than one life and things like that, it's not that important because we have people that come to our workshops or read my books and and they still can't believe, uh, they're not sure if it's true, this real incarnation, but you don't need to to believe in that. But I strongly, I personally believe because it helps me to accept uh, divine justice because I was, uh, I, I uh, my, my wound, my biggest wound in this lifetime to work with was injustice. And I used to find so many things unfair in life, you know, since I'm a little girl. And and I thought it was so unfair that some people come in a family where they are being beaten and abused and everything. And other people have such a loving family and all the talents and everything. So I thought, you know what, I, I wanted to believe in, in a fair God, but it was hard because I, because I was seeing so many unfair things around me. And now that I, when I learned, I was about 25 years old when I learned that I heard about reincarnation and right away, I said, Oh, thank God. I'm so happy to, 
to to know that we come more than one time so that at least um, those who are doing good, well, they'll be rewarded maybe in some other life. And those who are doing bad, well, maybe, you know, the, it continues. So to me, it was it was easier to, to believe in divine justice. So, but it's... Um, it's to me it's really important that the people believe whatever the the parents that they have in any lifetime is the parents that you really need to have in order to work on their plan of life because we all come come to work with a plan with definite things that we need to work on and when i say we have to work on something it means we have to look at this area of our life with with the the eyes of the heart we have to change our perception of things huh? well, you talk you about just... rejection being sort of handed down from mother to daughter and from father to son and you know down the genealogical line mm-hmm. so if you can um heal this relationship forgive the parent and forgive yourself you suggested that you go into your next um, <laughs> great act uh, on earth, your next incarnation, um, having put that issue, that wound away. So it would be like you turned off this propensity for uh, passing on the susceptibility to cancer uh, by being able to heal yourself in this life. Mm-hmm. It is. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because I, all anything that is done uh, by, by the soul, like you understood, you, you felt it, and you, you really uh, work with your heart, is, 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 to me, it's in the soul. So whenever you come back, you already know about that. Like, this is what we have each lifetime. We have to work on different things. And uh, um, so we are attracted by the parents in the family that we need for that. Like, for example, my mom had, um, well, we all have, uh, I don't know if I say it in the, bo- in the book of cancer, but in my book on the wounds, I explained that we all have at least four of the five wounds. It's only the wound of hu- humiliation that I don't see in everybody because we can see it in the body. Um, but the, so my mom had, the four wounds, and but not the humiliation. So, me, I, I got more like her, the, the part, the injustice, because she had the wound of injustice. So, this was what I went through with her. I did not feel rejected by my mom. But I have a few sisters who, for them, they had, they were felt more rejected. You see, like, so we connect to the part of our parent that we need to in order to work on ourselves. So it's uh, because my mom, she did everything the same. She wanted to do everything the same with everybody, but why did she have more of a rejection attitude with some of my sisters? Well, it's because my sisters attracted that to them because of the work they had to do. I don't know if I make so myself... So did your sisters yes. get cancer? The, yeah, yes. I have two sisters and I have a brother that died of cancer. My goodness. My goodness. Yes. And, now, how and, does this explain cancer in young children? Well, that's a good question because I asked myself that question many times. But it seems to be, according to what I heard and uh, I I've, I've deduced, uh, that... Now, with the Aquarian age, the, the, new, the, the, the new children, uh, the new age children, are much, much faster than, than the, the other generations. Uh, so the, 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 they're faster in everything. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, I know my children are much faster than, than my generation, and my, my uh, uh, grandchildren are much faster. So I think everything happens faster because they can understand things much faster because they, they, they were created in the, the, in the world of uh, more intelligence because with the Aquarian age, it's, there's more intelligence on Earth. It doesn't look like it when we look at the news, but uh, uh, I, I feel it that the, the, young, the children are... The, 
so are you suggesting that they're getting cancer at younger ages because they're processing their their issues faster sooner yes i believe that yes because i hear so many mothers tell me that you know when they do the workshops and they learn about how to find the, the cause of your their their problems you know physical problems and they sometimes they talk to their babies who are 6 months old and they explain to the baby look you have an, an infection of the ear but they, uh, i'll just explain to you what your body is telling you, and then you do what you want with it because it belongs to you, that earache. And they talk to the, the baby like that, and half an hour after, no more fever, you know. So I've heard this story, I don't know how many times, because they, they I don't know, they seem to grasp things. Like, I just look at my grandchildren, but now they're, they're quite older, but when they were three, four, five years old, you know, they they would look at me with those deep eyes and so much intelligence in their eyes. And sometimes uh, we would talk about God, you know. I mean, I never talked about God when I was three years old. And, and um, it's just, it's, um, I don't know, there's something, uh, there's something with this, the new children. I'm really excited because I know that the world will be different, you know, and, and maybe 20, 30, 40 years from now with this new generation. Speaking of God, you do make the point that cancer is not a punishment for God. Is this something that people tend to feel that they're being punished? Well, uh, that's what I learned when I was younger. So when things go bad, you're being punished. You know, you're being, you're being a bad person, so you're being punished. And, and, and I and I did not like that version of God, and because I I went you know I was in a very Catholic and I had my my upbringing with the nuns and uh, so and and I used to question all the time because I didn't like that. And when I learned that God is not. A per, it's not a, a being it's not a person god is just energy and it's a creative energy so this is why uh i i say in all my book that we are all god everything that exists is an expression of god whether it's the flower or or the little cat or a, 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 a cloud everything is god and, well uh, that's the music for our final break Uh, Remember that Lisa will be giving away two copies of the book, so email us at info at ncreview.com or go to our website, our show page on Ohm Times. We will be right back with our guest, Lise Bourbeau. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. As difficult as it is to believe, There are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi. This is Angela Levesque, host of Entanglement Radio. Join me Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations with visionaries in spiritual science and conscious healing. Entanglement Radio, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. Transcendent talk for the conscious mind. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light on Ohm Times Radio every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Hailing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. 
Welcome back. We're speaking with Lise Bourbeau. I want to remind you of her website, listentoyourbody.com. Lise, um, you have two sections at the end of the book that I thought, thought were very helpful. One was dealing with cancer in a loved one. Let's start with that. What are the best approaches that we can take or how do we uh, kind of preserve ourselves while giving the loved one what they need? Well, actually, first of all is to accept uh, uh, with other people because if you, uh, uh, if you start uh, doing everything you can so they can heal from their cancer or it, many times you're doing it for yourself because you're afraid what will happen to me when that person dies. And, and that's not uh, being loving the other person. The other person, if you really care about that person, is just be with that person. And it, just find out, it, does that person want to talk about her illness or his, his illness? Because I've, I was told many times, I get so sick and tired of people calling me, oh, how are you doing today? And I say, I don't want to talk about my illness all the time. But people don't even bother finding out, you know. Uh, so just uh, make sure that what you're doing, you're doing for the other person. And also what it helps is just make them talk about how do they feel about the idea of maybe dying, because many times people don't do that. They'll say, oh, you, you're okay, you know, with the science today. You, you won't die. Don't worry. And they're trying to make other people feel good. But while the other one is petrified at the idea of dying. So if, if, if they can talk about that to someone without being, we are, with just being listened to, you know, it, and it's okay. You're allowed to be afraid. You're allowed to. So, and some people want to die, and some people don't want to die. And if the person says, no, I don't want to die, okay, so what are you willing to do for, you know, if you want to stay alive? What do you want? Why do you want to live? Just make them talk, and because that helps much more the other person, uh, the loved one. My. And the other aspect is, of course, prevention and staying well yourself, and one of the points that you made was that you have the right to live for yourself. It is not selfishness mm -hmm. to want to be whole yourself. Mm -hmm. How do we distinguish between self-love and selfishness? Well, selfishness, it's funny that you asked me that question because I have to let, answer that Every time I talk, every time I go, I do a conference, a workshop, or a book. Uh, because we think that being selfish is thinking about ourselves first. That's what I learned when I was young. But if that's not true. Thinking of yourself first, listening to your own needs first, this is love of yourself. To be selfish is wanting somebody else to listen to my needs before theirs. That's being selfish. If, if so, it, but if I listen to my needs before I listen to the needs of others, I'm not being selfish. I'm not taking away anything from the other person. I'm just giving it to myself because nobody is on this earth in order to listen to the needs of others. If I decide I want to, I, I feel good about, you know, let's say my husband wants to go out and I don't want to go out. But if I say, okay, tonight I feel like uh, I want to please him and I want, it, because to please somebody is not, doesn't mean I love him. To love and to please is two different things. I may decide to, to do something for my husband because it makes me feel good to do it. But if I, if I say, uh, oh, I don't feel like going out and uh, uh, I'm tired tonight. And if he, if he says, oh, you're so selfish, you know, you just think of yourself. I'm not selfish. I'm just listening to my needs. Uh, if he wants to go out, he can go and listen to his own needs. You see what I mean? It's uh, mm -hmm. so we have to be careful with the uh, this definition of the word selfishness. But so many people think that if they listen to their own needs and other people do not agree with that, 
they're being selfish. It's not true because nobody can ever agree with everybody else. It's impossible. I mean, I, we're all different. We all have different wishes, different plan of life, different talents. We, we're different faults, different beliefs. So nobody can agree with everybody else all the time. But if I disagree with somebody, I'm not telling them I don't love them. I'm just having my own opinion. That's different. You know, that's, I think this is uh, similar to your theme, which is listen to your body. And yes. that is listen to your soul, listen to your heart. What yes. is it that your heart needs? Because there, there's a, diff- a, little, a little difference between listening to the needs of your body, because the body, the physical body, emotional body, mental body, they have different needs. So I explained that in my first book, Listen to Your Body. Uh, but if the, to listen to your body means listen to the messages your body is telling you all the time. If Do I feel good? If I feel ill at ease inside of me, there's... There's something that, you know, gnawing at me. It means I'm not listening to some needs of mine. If there's a fear, I'm not listening to a need of mine. If, if I feel obliged to do something, if I control myself, I am not listening to my needs. I'm listening to some things that I, that I learned sometime. I'm listening to my ego. So people have to really make the difference. Who is running my life this minute? Is it me in my heart? Or is it my ego that makes me feel guilty, gives me fears, uh, makes me feel bad? So it's one or the other. We're, we're either, you know, acting out of fear, or acting out of love. So to me, there's only two things in life, fear and love. <laughs> yeah. You have something called the listen to your body triangle, which I thought was very helpful. Tell us about that. Well, we everything is goes three ways. The, I love myself the same way I love others and others love me. So that means that, but this only works, all these um, spiritual uh, things that I come up with, it's always in the being, not in the doing. So it, it's uh, if I'm being impatient with others, I am as much impatient with myself and others are impatient with me. It always works three ways, but only in the being, not... The, it's not what I do that others do to me. It's that it's more what do we judge people of being when they do that. This is works in the triangle all the time. That's a, a spiritual law that exists for everybody. So it's like a mirror reflection back. That's right. The mirror reflection is a spiritual law also. But it's all, only in the being. Uh, because somebody says, oh, I can't stand uh, somebody that smokes in my presence, but I, he's not my mirror because I don't smoke. No. What do you judge that person when they smoke in your presence? I judge them of being irrespectful. Uh, well, that means that you are irrespectful. Do you see that, that sometimes you are irrespectful in other areas maybe? But so when you when you work on the being, it always works. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's a very good distinction. Yes. I want to just come back to the point of preventing cancer through the power of love. Um, I, I remember interviewing Anita Morjani on her book, Dying to Be Me, and she said that the main reason for cancer is that we do not love ourselves enough. And yes. I think you are resonating with that very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I read her book too a couple of years ago. That was very good, then. Eh? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's just that it, it's it's nice that it comes from different sources with being said different ways. So you know, we, we try to <laughs> this way. Well, if one way doesn't resonate with you, well, maybe the other way will. Huh? So hmm. that yes. is the underlying premise behind all of my work, please. <laughs> so. Yes, I can understand that. Yes. Hmm. So do you have a sort of parting message for our listeners? Well, just just know that before I was talking about God, that just remember that you are your own God. You are your own creative energy. And do you use this power of God that you are to, to accomplish what you want to be in life or to, to be what you don't want to be? This is that you always have the choice what you want to create with your life. 
And because people think that somebody is more powerful than another. No, we're all expressions of God at the same level, but it depends how do, do we use our power of create, creating our life, you know. So, because if you are in fear, well, then you create the opposite to what you want. Huh? So that's why just, I, I would just love everybody to, to know how much they can create a beautiful life if they want to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've only been able to touch the surface of Lee's book, and um, I, I do commend it, and I would like to remind you that if you email us at info at ncreview.com, you have a good chance of getting a free copy. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lise, I would like to thank you very much for being with us today all the way from Canada. Yeah, it was a pleasure. And uh, remind you that her website is listen to your body.com or if you are a francophone, it's écoute ton corps.com. Ah, you speak good French. Oh, I, I'm always delighted when I have a French speaking uh, guest because it gives me the chance to trot out my <laughs> remainder of my French. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. And maybe one day we'll meet sometime. It would be nice. Absolutely. Yes. And I do hope that you will all join us next week for another uh, show with um, our uh, authors, our wonderful authors and filmmakers. And in the meantime, visit our website at ncreview.com. That's New Consciousness Review, a digital magazine. And we have our entire archive of wonderful interviews there. Thank you for being with us today. I'm Miriam Knight. Many blessings on your day, on your week. See you next time. Goodbye.